Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm not sure y'all can hear me. It looks like my mic's on. All right. I have to set this up on my... Look, I'm live. It says so on my phone. Which is really funny. Give me just a second. I have to set this up on the other computer. I don't know how long I will be live today. I look like a weirdo. Okay, there we go. Now I can see. All right. Good morning, everyone. Yes, I am live. Okay. <laughs> I slept with my bedroom window open last night. And oh, my jingles. My allergies are going, what? <laughs> okay, I'm going to show you what we're making. I've got a mess on my desk because I've been um, playing with uh, clothespins here lately. But we are going to make a boat. But it's not going to be this small. I'm making a bigger boat. Because this was a pain in the tush. So I'm going to turn you guys down. There we go. As you can see, I don't have a lot of room. Let's see. Last night, I made this little table. And that's not even a table. That's a chair. This is the table. Yeah, it's kind of like a bench type thing. I'm going to set that over there. I'm going to set this boat over here to draw. Oh, thank you. Um, this is half my idea. And I'm saying half for the boat. Because I watched another lady... Um, I would love to give her credit, uh, but I don't know how to say her name because it's uh, in Spanish, and her whole channel's in Spanish. If I remember, I'll link it at the bottom. But uh, this, the only thing that's hers is this, this right here. That's it. That's the only thing I'm copying. This is mine, and this is mine. You need 16 clothespins. I don't know how many is there. I gotta count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Plus two more. All right. What we do is we take my part. Yeah, I'm going to use the, the little table and chair for dollhouse furniture. Um, I'm also going to... Uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing with this. I'm probably going to paint that, but like I said, I'm not sure. So you need 16 pairs. No, you need 16, 17. You need 18 pairs to do it the way I'm doing it. Let 
when I was watching uh, the other woman do it, I was like, oh, girl, you just gave me so many ideas. <laughs> but I'm on my last pack of clothespins. And uh, so I'm trying to make the small stuff first that I know I'll have enough clothespins for. And last night I was just sitting here. I was going to make a swing. I, I was going to make this into a swing, but I had such a hard time stringing that one that I was like, you're not happening. But I do have some other ideas. For, uh oh, I broke that one. No, it really don't matter. I don't think we needed that one. Yeah, I was thinking the boat and the little chair and little table that might look good in like a fairy garden type thing because they're so teeny. Don't don't throw these away. These can be used for all kinds of stuff. One thing I'll show you. I think I showed it in the video the other day. I finally got it. The only thing I have left to do is I have to glue the top and shorten this a little bit. But am I in frame? Yeah, I'm in frame. There is the cross that I made. And I didn't glue mine. What I did was I got some... Um, Floral wire, uh, it's 26 gauge. Uh, my Dollar Tree had this, and I put it through these holes like in an X formation, and then I threaded my flower through it, and then I just twirled them so that it's securing the flower and it's securing this so it doesn't come apart like I said all I have to do is um, I don't know if I'm going to glue it or if I'm going to actually put a couple of stitches in that and then I, I don't know what she would want to use it for like if she wants to hang it from her mirror or something so I may leave the length of ribbon just so she can decide what she's going to do with it this is for my friend Amy Okay, so, and there's other things that I'll show you guys what you can do with these two. All righty. So, what we're going to do is, I have to remember how I did this last night. Okay. You are going to glue them in fours. But I think the first four I'm going to glue together are the back. The back four. I'm using wood glue. You can use hot glue, tacky glue. Use whatever glue you want. I just like wood glue. So that's what I'm doing. I'm using Gorilla Wood Glue. <coughs> Excuse me. I really like it. I also use uh, Gorilla Glue Hot Glue. I really like that too. So we're going to glue, glue these four together. Make sure you press them. together oh. and yes they do come apart a lot but I don't care Wait, they're just so how is everyone doing Now, if you want to paint these beforehand, you can. But the nice thing about this Gorilla Glue that I'm using 
um, is it, it is paintable. It is paintable. It is stainable. Um, if you do buy wood glue, make sure you read on it to see if it's paintable, stainable, what have you. Because not all wood glue you can paint. Or, if you really want to have fun, uh, before you even glue them together, which I thought about doing, but I didn't, um, torch them. Light them babies on fire and get some really cool effects, like I did on my cross. And you do not have to be like me and make sure everything is aligned perfectly. Just slap them together. But if you're OCD like me, then you do. Because not all clothespins are going to line up perfectly. Okay, so this is going to be our back of our... And I did that wrong, didn't I? No, that's how I did it on the mini one. Okay, so I didn't do it wrong. Never mind. Okay, so now we're going to take four of them and you're going to lay them like that. And what you're going to do, I will say if you do decide to burn your clothespins, do it in a well-ventilated area, okay? Because there will be a little bit of fumes. I'm not sure if they treat these with something. But I noticed when I was burning the cross that they had a slight odor. Did I not open it? I have no idea who's putting in me. Hold on. Nope, they weren't printing in me. Now if I can just get my glue to come out, I shouldn't have left it open. Okay. So you're going to glue. You're going to put glue on your flat part, and then you're going to take this one. I'm spreading the glue out just a little bit. And you're going to glue just like that. Hopefully not as messy as me. And I find it a little bit easier if you lay them on their sides. Two. Two. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna glue. You're gonna Eight pairs of four is what you're doing. all over me except I wanted to finish them my little boat before I started this boat. I think my glue has a clog in it. Thank you. 
when you work with minis, you don't have to have a lot of room. I didn't think about that before I started this. I needed a lot more room. Okay, somebody right. Why are you so thick? Thing on the lobby ball. Okay. That down. And I may have some um, popsicle art coming up soon, too. I don't know. Because I've got a ton of popsicle sticks. For some reason, that's a big old clumpy clump in my wood glue. I've been making a bunch of ephemera for some journals. The other day, I was making stencils for some canvases I want to start. And then... Um, I don't remember who the name is of the lady. I'm really bad with names. But Ray had me watching a lady the other day. And she used cream paste on an embossing folder. So monkey see, monkey do. Well, apparently I put it on way too thin last night. And so when I peeled it this morning... It just shredded. It didn't work at all. So I have, oh, yeah. So I have redone it to see if, uh, um, this time I've done it right. I don't know. I'm hoping so because. Wow, what she did was awesome. I made a couple of mini journals um, to go like in your wallet or something. I'll show those in a little bit. I mean, they could just go in your pocketbook or you could stick them in another journal, I guess. Okay. There's three of the eight. I 
Oh, and I've got some... My safety glasses just reminded me. I'm going to have some Coke can embellishments coming up soon, too. I had to go buy some safety glasses because <coughs> Ray and I were on the uh, uh, video chatting one day while I was cutting up some cans. And I didn't have safety glasses on. I do not recommend doing that, okay? Don't don't be stupid. Wear safety glasses when you're cutting metal. I mean, I knew this, but I was in a hurry to try something. And uh, the first can I cut, no problem. Second can I cut, no problem. Went to cut my third can. And apparently... I nipped the can and I got a sliver of metal stuck in my eye. I mean, I felt it when it hit. And uh, I told Ray, I said, hold on. And I had my husband come over and it, I mean, hitting your eye is not good. But thank God it was the white. I hit the white part of the eye. Um, so, yeah, I decided um, not doing those anymore until I get safety glasses. So, he had to go to Walmart to get something last weekend, and I went with him. That was not fun. I don't do good in stores anymore since all this stuff has happened. I've been having real bad panic attacks. But they were only letting a certain amount of people in the stores at an, in the store at a time. So it wasn't too bad. So I got... Boy, this is my, my experiment I'm trying. So I got me safety glasses. So now I will not be putting my eyeballs out. That was scary. I mean, normally I don't scare very easy. You know, when I do stupid stuff. And, uh, yeah, that hitting my eye, that, that scared me. My husband called me one day, what was it? two weeks ago, I think it was. And he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I glued myself to the desk. And he's like, do I want to know how you glued yourself to the desk? And I'm like, probably not. What had happened was, I was getting ready to use my cricket. My cricket's over here, you guys can't see it, and uh, I had my thing of homemade Mod Podge on my desk, and I was going to try to fix it because it was like uber runny, and I got sidetracked because of Ray. I'm blaming Ray because she's not in here to defend herself. <laughs> Yeah, she had challenged me to make something. And so, I was getting ready to use the Cricut. And I went to pick it up. I had all my paper laid out that I was going to use. I had a stack of cardstock out. I went to move. I had moved my keyboard and stuff out of the way, my mouse. 
I went to move the Mod Podge and I picked it up by the top, not remembering I was getting ready to add paint, not paint, glue to it to thicken it up. It went everywhere. I mean, this whole container of Mod Podge went everywhere. I ruined. I didn't ruin because I did wind up using it. I figured out how to do it. Um, the cardstock I had sitting here, it was almost a half a pack of cardstock, and it it got glued together. Um, my carpet's glued because I couldn't get it out of my carpet. I don't care. This carpet's going to be trash anyway. I think the mask are kind of... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm very claustrophobic, and I've got a mask that Miss Elizabeth gave me. She sent it when she sent me Happy Mail. Um, I've worn it a couple of times, but yeah, I freak out. I don't know where Sass. I think Sassy was up, upstairs at the time. I didn't think it was funny because, I mean, that stuff was drying so fast. But I told, was it Ray or my husband? I told one of them that uh, at least I know how to uh, glue a book together now. Yeah, I can't either. It's like my brain goes, your face is covered. You can't breathe. They haven't made it mandatory here where I live to that you have to wear a mask to go in anywhere. Um, if they did, then it would be my husband and son shopping because I just... I can't. <laughs> I cannot do it. It'd more than likely probably be my son. Because I don't think my husband likes to wear masks either. Well, my hair is just getting everywhere. The reason why I did the small boat last night was actually to see if my idea would work. That way I knew <laughs> whether or not to even attempt this. So I'm not going to lie. That's why I did the small one too. That and I wanted the small boat. But it was more of that was my experiment so I didn't look like a fool on YouTube. It really doesn't take the glue too, too terribly long to dry is another thing that I like. Oh, Lord. It is mandatory there. Wow. I don't understand why Tennessee didn't make it mandatory, but they didn't. 
Not that it would do not not that it would have done any good because if they would have made it mandatory, I don't know how we would have went to the grocery store because everything was gone and I wouldn't even have a mask if it wasn't for Miss Elizabeth because uh, there's something wrong with my stupid sewing machine. And so, I mean, I guess we could have got the bandanas or what have you. But good luck trying to find those now, too. It's like everything nailed down. All the fabric's gone at Walmart. I looked for a sewing machine and fabric while I was at Walmart last weekend and I'm not paying $300 for a sewing machine. Well, it wasn't just, a, it was a sewing machine, but it was also, um, it did embroidery, which I didn't quite understand how you can have a sewing machine that does both. But, you know, there's smarter people out there than me. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't wear it in my vehicle. I would just wear it inside the store. I just don't like the fact that they're opening everything back up so soon. But, you know, I understand people have got to work. And I feel so bad for everybody who's been out of work and... This has been scary. I just hope that them opening everything up won't, oh shoot, I just popped that one off, won't make it worse. Yeah, I know you can't find the elastic either. Um, what was it? Uh, I saw a stupid ad on um, Facebook for Elastic. And my job is not opening back up yet. We got lucky and my husband and my son both are essentials. Uh, my son works at a gas station. You know, so... That kind of helped with him having a job. Um, and my my husband, he, uh, he builds countertops, but for some reason, they consider that construction. So their job was essential, too. I worried. <laughs> I worried more about my son than I did my husband because... You know, my husband and them don't get very many people that come in. And the ones that do, it's only like one person at a time. Maybe two if um, they bring somebody with them. But for the most part, it's just one person. So they can sterilize as soon as the person leaves. And... Every time the person wants to shake hands, my husband and his boss, they're so funny. They're like, not to be rude, but no, thank you. My husband is an engineer, so he's working. And my daughter is a pharmacist, so she's working. Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay, so now we have all of our little rows done. I want to start from the back and go forward. That way these are already dry. What we're doing is we're going to stack them on top of each other. And glue them. These are going to be the sides of our boat. Let 
me tell you, this is a lot easier with these big ones. I, I'd be worried about your daughter, too. Is she, like, in a hospital pharmacy, or is she in, like, a drugstore? Either scary, because they're having to deal with sick people. Don't do like me and stick your finger back in the glue after you put it down. She's in Walgreens. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. You get all kinds of sickies in there. They don't care. Well, I will definitely keep her in my prayers. The one thing I have learned through all this is um, a couple of years ago, I quit watching the news and all that kind of stuff as well. It was depressing. And uh, yeah, that was the best decision I ever made in my life. <laughs> I can't watch the news anymore. And my heart's going out to all these doctors um, and nurses. Um, I saw a lady on Facebook. Um, her, I guess she used to be a nurse. And the nurse who trained her and uh, some other people, some other nurses all died of the coronavirus and uh, my heart just just went out to her because she's like it's hard to believe Oh, I bet. I'd be like, um, you see that tape over there? You stand there and I'll wing it to you. And you can pay the cashier up front. <laughs> Let the cashier up front get it. <laughs> That's mean. Yeah, my husband came home and I was freaked out. I was in tears and uh, he said, that's it. You're, you're not allowed to watch the news anymore. You're not. I, I, I couldn't watch it. And then he came home and he was like, um. One day he came home and he was like, um, you know, we got to talk. Well, it's never good when your husband or your, your significant other or whatever goes, we have to talk. You know something bad's getting ready to go and right after that. And that's when he told me that they weren't even sure they were going to have work. That, yay, they got to stay open, but... Um, they, um, when Tennessee shut down, 
they had enough work for two weeks. That was it. And they said if they didn't get any more jobs in, even though they were essentials, that they would have to close the doors. And if they closed the doors, they did not know if they would reopen, which meant we would lose our house and everything. And that, that freaked me out on top of, you know, hearing the news and everything. And it got to the point where I just told him, I don't want to know anything. Don't, don't tell me anything. I couldn't handle it. Um, I thought I was having a panic attack. I was, or I thought I was having a heart attack. I was actually having a panic attack. So I was just like, yep, I don't want to know no more. I don't want to hear no more. And if he wanted to, because he listens to the press conferences every day. Uh, he sits out in his car. He listens to them because I, I just, I can't, I can't handle it. Um, when all this started and we went to the grocery store and we saw that there was no food at the, um, store, I just looked at him and I, I had a panic attack then because my youngest son, is a very picky eater and everything he ate was gone it wasn't at the stores and you know i wasn't worried about me my husband or my other kid i my first thought is what the hell am i going to feed my son who's the pickiest eater of the entire family and there for a while only my husband and my oldest son could go to the store because of how bad it was. I would just, as soon as I would get in there, I would have a massive panic attack. It's gotten better. I haven't had any panic attacks lately until he took me to flipping Walmart. That was the furthest I've been from my house. Uh, we do all our shopping right here in town. I don't, I don't like to venture too far away. I got to see my dad for the first time since all this happened last Saturday. He had us stop by. And he gave us a bunch of coffee. He said, just stand in the driveway and I'll throw it at you. I was like, okay, that's a deal. But he actually came down and talked to us and everything. And he's looking good. He's doing good. Um, my son, they he got to keep his job. Uh, he's the one that my oldest son lives with my dad. Uh, he works at a coffee plant and they were considered essentials. So they got to keep their jobs, which I'm so, I'm so excited for because my brother works there also. And I was worried about them. I've been praying for them. I, I know. I mean, come on, people. Get off the... I mean... The whole toilet paper thing is just... It just blows my mind. I'll tell you another thing that blows my mind about the whole, you know, incident with no toilet paper and all that kind of stuff is... uh. 
I was reading something and I thought it was mamas and daddies of kids that were hoarding formula and stuff, you know, because everybody else went nuts, so why not? And I was shocked to find out that it's not parents with kids, that it was actually non people kid people with people without kids i don't know how to word that because it stays on the shelf longer than milk does i was thinking how dare you buy formula that babies need because you're afraid you're not going to have milk there's powdered milk. There's milk that is on the shelf. You don't have to get baby milk. You know, formula for babies is what I'm talking about. And if you were one of the pack rats that did it, shame on you. You should be strung up by your toes. Yeah, coffee is essential for a lot of people. Thank God I don't drink it. I don't know. I started to, started to drink coffee, and I was like, mm, no, I just, I just got off cigarettes. I don't think replacing cigarettes with coffee would be a good, good idea. Oh, and yeah, that was the smartest thing I ever did. Let's, why there's an apocalypse going on, stop smoking. If anyone else did it, well, you know, besides me, kudos. Kudos. I'm telling you, kudos. There's been many a days I've wanted to kill people. It is horrible. If you ever drink this stuff by accident, which I have, I, I don't know why you would want it. That's like, I felt guilty because I had bought baby wipes. Uh, this is before everybody started hoarding and everything. It was like the week before. And I had bought two big things of baby wipes. Okay, I call them big things. They were 80 count. Um, and I think I got them from Dollar Tree. But I felt so bad because I'm thinking, I just bought these baby wipes. Now these people don't have baby wipes, you know? That's where my mind went. I was like, I did this wrong. But I didn't. I made so sure that the back was level. I forgot to make sure the front was level. But that's okay. Uh-oh. Is this going to be... That's my cat, by the way. She's in heat. Okay, so what the other lady did at this point here is she actually made 
um, three pieces that went on the inside and you glued this to that and it, it just it didn't look right to me and my mind's eye I was like no I want a solid bottom so that's why I came up with this which I know I can wood glue this but I don't know I think I'm gonna have to hot glue that part And because your clothespins are curved, you're not going to get a flush on the, what I call the big end. Yeah, that's really should have paid better attention to my front. There we go. That was gonna be like a giant gap. I can fill it in with wood filler. Or I could always shut up, Sassy. want to do Let's just plaster some wood glue there I should when you do this or if you make one uh, make sure you're don't worry so much about the back being lined. Make sure that these up here are flush. That way your tip goes in better. I mean, it's not going to be a problem. Like I said, I've got wood filler. I can fill that gap. Dang it. Put some tape on this. Okay. Let's tape it. Where did my tape? If I was my tape, where would I hide myself? Aha! Uh -huh, under the clothespins. Because that's where they belong. Oops. Oopsie oops. Oh, 
Oh, zip your lip, you fur bag. I'm not really going for perfection. I'm just trying to. Because with clothespins, there's no such thing as perfection. But you can see on this one how they lined up perfect. It's because I made sure these were flush. Figure out which one I want to be my bottom. I think I'm gonna have that be my bottom. Okay, and then oh cool. This is just a piece of chipboard out of something. I don't remember exactly what it's out of. I'm just going to wait. I traced the in the outside. Trace the inside. I think I'm gonna trace the outside. to trace the inside. There we go. I'm thinking this might help me this time. <laughs> Here's my scissors. Like I said, the way the lady did her, I don't want these scissors. Um, she used clothespins on the inside. And I want a solid bottom. Now, I trace the inside and the outside of the boat, and I'm going inside the line of the outer one, but leaving a little bit of a space between the two. Hoping I didn't cut too much off. Because I know the other one took me forever to get just right. So I'm trying it this way this time. 
That fell on the floor. Okay, Timmy, sit there for a second. And that's what I was afraid of. I cut too much. Oh, wait, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. Yay, or did I? I think I did. Oh, another piece of cardboard. I cut it too small. No, I haven't used my Cricut to cut wood yet with. Um, I know that they say you can cut real um, thin wood with, with it. Like balsa wood. That's real... Uh, but I've not tried. That's on my to do list. <laughs> I have made my own stencils using uh, the Cricut, and I use uh, laminated sheets to make my stencils. This one's I'll probably have to double that up. Okay, so I cut. This one doesn't really need to be too much bigger. It just needs to be a tick bigger. I'm going to be a tick bigger that way, huh? Okay, you two are getting on my nerves. No, and I saw um, a 
I was trying to think. Why did I throw that in the trash? I wasn't ready to throw it away yet. Oh well. I told my husband I was watching um, Bentley House and Miniatures, and uh, she bought a 3D printer. And I told my husband, I said, when you're rich and famous, I want a 3D printer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love Bentley. She, uh, her name's Eric. I can't even remember her name. My mind's fraud. But I was watching her make, what was the first thing she made in there? A trunk, a, a trunk, I think it was, that she made in there. And I was just like, Girl, I have to get one of those. <laughs> of course, I also want a laser printer, too. Just so I can print stuff off at the house and not worry about the ink running and stuff. I probably should have set the boat on this before I cut it out, but I think it'll be fine. Let's go around. So it wasn't really too far away. Because I have an inkjet printer and I don't. <sighs> yeah, to do transfers. That's the one thing I really want to do also is there are so many awesome things you could do. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. The, the printer I have, it's a good one, blah, blah, blah. But in the crafting world, there's just so much more you can do with an inkjet. Uh, not inkjet, a laser, laser printer. Yeah. Hey, Fiber, how are you? Yeah, I decided to come on today. Ah! Okay. Me and my glue on. Really friendly. I asked my husband last night, I said, Can you tell me why my wood glue? It's clumpy. It's like, nope. I'm like, you're a flipping carpenter and can't tell me why my wood glue is clumpy? And he yelled at me because I was storing it upside down. I told him I thought all glue got stored upside down. And he's like, you'd never store your wood glue upside down. That, that'll make it all wonky. I don't know what his uh, definition was wonky. So I don't know if that's why my wood glue is lumpy dumpy. It's because at one time I had it stored upside down. He won't tell me that's why it's all lumpy. 
he just likes to fuss at me. I think that's my theory anyway. Okay, so we did make it a little bit too big, but you know what? I can cut that off. I can live with it. Yes. Yeah, yes, I can. Okay. Scooch. 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 What's that? Wood glue draws. We'll cut off the excess. And... Paper tamper over here. Okay. Like I said, we're going to trim off some of this extra, but I'm not cutting it with my scissors. So. That's all completely dried. I will cut that and I will fill this in with um yep, that's what I'm gonna fill it in with. <laughs> I just said it a minute ago. Wood filler. Good lord. I can't do any painting until I get my hand. I'm not sure if I want to put seats in. And if this is okay, those are too wide. Okay. Too wide. So if we're gonna put benches in We'll have, no oh wait, how much too wide is that? Just a nurgle too wide. Let's see if I just. Let me see. I just knew.
Actually, now I'm looking at this. I know y'all are thinking, you just put that on there. I know. I know. I know. I know. But I have an idea. I think I want to do popsicle sticks across the bottom. Yeah, yes. I think that's what we're going to do. What did I do with my popsicle sticks? Hold on. Oh, this, um, oh, <laughs> I got it at Hobby Lobby. Let me look at the, look at their website real quick and I can tell you what it's called. Okay, I thought it was going to be easy for me to find it again. What is it called? And the name is not on it. No, wait. Easy cutter, that's what it's called. Mm. Let me see. Easy cutter. Oh no, I know that's where I got it from. I just saw them not to. Anyway. I know I got it at Hobby Lobby. But um, I have to have my husband help me. You can move this. This here. And it you can cut. A 45, a 60, a 70. A 90. A 105. A 120 and 35 angle. So, but yeah, I got this from Hobby Lobby. It says Miss Midwest Product Easy Cutter Ultimate. I don't know if that'll show up because it's all shiny. 
Yep. Nope. It's not going to show up. Sorry. I love it. I mean, right now it's a little bit of a pain because I'm trying to cut straight lines. Yeah, my dad got these uh, popsicle sticks at Goodwill for me. I'm only going to cut one end and then I'm going to line them all up. And then Drop a line so I know where to cut the other ones. This will cut. Oh, wrong way. Um. up to an inch thick I think because I have some dowels I got this for when I was doing my dollhouse and uh, my dowels were about the, the, the thickness of my pinky and this cut some I don't have the hand strength to push it down I have to uh, score but when my husband's home I just put the first initial little score in it and he squishes them down all right Jen but yeah it cuts like butter and I don't know if you can um, sharpen the blades or not, or if you have to buy another blade. I'm sure somewhere I have the paperwork for it, but... Um, I don't know where. Amazon, it was thirty-five eleven. That's not bad. Check and see if they still have them at Hobby Lobby. Because I know that I didn't... I'm thinking I only paid $18 for mine because I had a coupon. Uh... I never knew about the coupons. You know what? That kind of looks like a can opener on the front of this sucker. Oh, anyway. Sorry, I got sidetracked. <laughs> uh, one of the other ladies that I watch that does miniatures, this was when she was recommending tools. This is what she recommended. I would go to Home Depot and get it. Definitely get it from home. I didn't even think about Home Depot. Ooh, if you have a harbor freight around you, I'd look at that, too. I should be. My husband's at 12. Oh, it is. It is 12. Oh, that was my husband. Oops.
All right, roll in. I know my Home Depot and Lowe's is open. And my Harbor Freight is open, too. That's in Tennessee, so I don't know if that helps anybody. I just got an email from Harbor Freight saying that they were open. That's the only reason why I know they're open. And Lowe's um, is the company that my husband and them uh, deliver to. They make all their countertops. That's why I know they're open. Okay, I have to set that down for a second. I pulled this one off. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's like got a notch there, so I may use it closer up here. So I cut that notch out. Oh, well. Ah! I was hoping maybe Harbor Freight might have it because sometimes they're cheaper than Lowe's and Home Depot. <laughs> Ow. But I'd say, and I mean, I'd, I'd say... That the ones you get from Lowe's or Home Depot would probably be better quality than, than maybe the ones that um, the craft store. There. I'm sorry if we have any more. Think. Shoot, did he get glued? <laughs> he may have got ah, no, stop it. Because you're all wonka doodle. You have to come out.
Texas is opening back up today. Parts of parts of Tennessee, I believe, opened back up today. That's okay. Alrighty. Why is my pencil not writing on that? But apparently there was glue there. We're going on third month. They are opening some state parks and some fishing. Where are you at, Arlene? I know Tennessee said they're opening some stuff. Illinois. Okay. I honestly don't know what all they're opening in Tennessee. Uh, because like I said, <laughs> I had panic attacks watching the news and stuff. Only thing I know that they're not opening is the hair salons. And I understand why you cannot social distance. But right now, I would kill for a haircut. I really would. What do I want for dinner tonight? I have no idea. I know they said they're opening up um, a couple of the parks. I don't believe they're opening up the state park here. The nail salons are supposed to open May 1st, I believe, here. So I'm assuming that's when they'll open up the hair salons, but I'm not sure about the hair salons. Um, and the nails, the the nail salon I saw. Oh, that is today, isn't it? Holy crap! When did that happen? <laughs> 
See, this quarantine has got my days all confused. Um, uh, shoot. They said you have to wear a mask at the at the salon. You can't take anyone with you. But I have not heard anything about uh, haircuts or any anybody that does haircuts. Hey, Crafty Kitty, how are you? And the parks that they do open, they said there's not going to be any bathrooms or anything. So, good luck with that. <laughs> it went flying, flying. Now, if you were just there, how could you not fit back? Stay. Oh, that's because that glue's there. Let's see. Oh, they're opening the gyms there? Holy moly. Salon's gym. Salon gyms here aren't opening until May 1st. And where are you at? Crafty kitty. See, I don't, I don't watch the news, so I'm not. Aren't opening. Oh, until wait, May 1st. I told my hubby I needed those. <laughs> Oh. You're in Texas. Everybody's in Texas. Yeah, gross. Yeah, I want to know when May 1st happened. I mean, come on, people. What happened to April? Oh, fraud. I apparently freaked out during April. <laughs> My husband asked me what I wanted for dinner tonight. I thought it was a good idea to put anything that goes with Jack and Pepsi. And he just laughed at me. And... That sounds good to me. I don't know why he thought it was so funny. I'm not sure. What they're opening back up here. All I know is they said have to. I don't know. I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's, 
this whole this whole thing is out of whack to me. It's like you don't know what to believe, what not to believe. I mean, yes, I understand there are people dying. I get that. I've seen it. No. But you would. I don't know if they don't want to open the restrooms up due to the fact that they have to have people clean them, which. Okay, they should be cleaned anyway, and most of them are nasty when you go. Because, you know, people are just absolutely grotesque anyway. It could be because of the toilet paper shortage. Yeah, that's true. <coughs> If they do put toilet paper in there, then all anybody's going to do is steal it. So, I mean, yeah, why open up the bathrooms? Or do a, what is it, bring your own toilet paper? I just want to be able to go to a craft store and not worry about dropping dead. But my husband and I were talking and I don't know if any of you remember uh, back, uh, it was either in November or December, my husband was real bad sick and he was coughing. He was sick for over a month. And we honestly think that's what he had was the coronavirus back then. Because his fever got to... Uh, 108... At one point, and he would not let me take him to the hospital or anything, and I nursed him back to health. It was absolutely scary. I honestly thought he was dying on me, and uh, knock on wood, he didn't die, of course, because you know he's still here bugging the crap out of me. But, uh, <laughs> let's see. Yeah, I know in everybody, are, you know, in some of these states where some of the craft stores are letting people in them, they're having like awesome clearance sales. And it just, even if I can't buy it, I just want to go in and look. <laughs> and the number of false positive. Yeah. And see, that, that's why, I guess that's one reason why I'm not, it's not that I'm afraid of getting it or anything like that. Like I I cut that one too short. Too many crickets. Like I said, I think that's what my husband had in November and... You know, my son got it. He didn't get it as bad as my husband, but he he was real sick. Um, so <laughs> I can tell you now. Uh, my husband got it from his boss, and his boss was trying to tell him that their doctor 
told them it would, could be a form of TB as what they thought it was. And uh, I told Ricky, I said, it's not tuberculosis. I said, you guys do not have tuberculosis. And <clears throat> he's like, yeah, I know. Ooh. I know what tuberculosis is. I've been around it enough. This is what scares me about this whole virus thing. The last thing I had read was, or that I had heard about, uh, my husband listens to a talk show and he had used my son's car and he had left it on that station. Well, that night when I would pick my son up from work, they were talking about these doctors who wrote a paper about this and said that we did the quarantine wrong. And I was like, what crap do you, how do you do a quarantine wrong, right? And, uh, what he said was, what we should have done was quarantined the elderly, of course. Um, but quarantine the ones that have the bad immune systems, um, the elderly. But I think it should only be the elderly that have immune system compromised. That's just me. And shut up, sassy. Nobody cares. And uh, let's see. Everybody has, I've got this glue on my finger and I didn't want to wipe it off. I was trying to save it. Anyway, the ones that are sick, of course. But let everybody else go about their normal day of life because he called it something hurting. You want people to catch, you want people with healthy immune systems to catch the virus. Because they build up the antibodies against the virus. And then when they're around other people, when other people get it, they get a weaker strain. Anyway, it was something like that. Anyway, what he said made sense. I'm not making any sense, so you know, overlook me. I'll probably get like 9 million thumbs down for that comment, but I don't care. I wish I could remember exactly how he worded it, but he called it hurting. Where you put well people out there so that they get it. And then when they pass their strand along, it's weaker than the original. Ugh. Then that way, when you do go around somebody with a compromised immune system or what have you, they're not likely to get the get the one to um, kill them. But he said the way that we did it, you quarantined everyone except for essentials. I get that, but that there wasn't enough people out and about 
And so after they open everything up, it's probably going to get worse. And that's the part that scares me is the part about it could get worse. I don't like that idea of it getting worse. I don't want to hear about anybody else losing their life because of this. <sighs> I don't know. The way he was saying it was the more people that get infected by it, the more antibodies people would make and I don't know if that means they'd be able to make a cure faster or if it mutates into another strand that's just weaker. I didn't understand that part, but I understood the part. I mean, some of what he said made sense about that where we quarantined everybody, but a few people that when everybody comes out of quarantine, it's probably going to be worse than it was before. And that's the scary part of his whole message. I was like, oh, great. So because we quarantine everybody in the world, you know, everybody, we just might have made this worse. Yeah, see, I know this whole airborne thing also doesn't make sense either. I mean, yes, I understand viruses are airborne. Don't don't get me wrong. I get that. But one minute they're telling us uh, the sun doesn't affect it, and then they and then in the next breath they're like. Oh no, the sun helps kill it. And it's like, do y'all even know what you're talking about? Have y'all figured it out yet? I told my son, I said, I'm more worried about you because you work at a gas station and you get them freaks in there. And he's like, I'm not worried about catching the virus. He goes, I'm worried about catching something Ajax won't take off. And of course, I, being his mom said, of course, you're going to get something Ajax takes off. Even Ajax won't take the virus off. So. Yeah. Don't predict me. Amy, what are you predicting to me? Okay, that's going to hurt. Yeah, see that? <laughs> That's why I've been loving these posts on Facebook, you know, where they say, um, they tell us that sunshine doesn't help and, or no, sunshine does and alcohol or something. So if you see me butt, butt naked and drunk out in the yard, just mind your own business. I'm doing research. It's basically, basically what it's coming down to.
I did read a report from a nurse that kind of bugged me. But then again, you don't know what is true on the internet and what's not anymore. If what she said was true about this virus, she said you go in and if you're put on a ventilator, you might as well forget it. You're not coming out alive. I told my husband, I said, we're living in a Stephen King novel, and I don't like the ending. Yep. I mean, the, you know, when this all started, and I don't know, I don't know who the first person was, I really don't, who thought, hey, I am going to hoard all the toilet paper I can, because, well, this is a virus that causes sneezy runny noses, watery eyes. So I'm going to hoard all the toilet paper. Why? Why in God's little green earth did they not think, huh, this is respiratory. Maybe instead of hoarding toilet paper, I get stuff like, oh, I don't know, let's say tissues. Hello. You can blow your nose. I remember when this first started, you could go in and all the tissue paper's in there, but there's no toilet paper. I'm like, that makes no sense. This is a respiratory, which means you're going to be, oops. Sneezing, not going to the bathroom every five minutes. Oh, I believe that a hundred percent. I believe that, you know... I may lose followers, and I really don't care. I am a Trump supporter. And I have seen the comments that people leave about, you know, Trump telling the world to drink bleach and stuff like that. First off, he was being a smartass because of those reporters and I'll be called a stupid Trump supporter brainwashed for saying that but you know what I really don't care I've kept my mouth shut about my political views but I am so sick of seeing intelligent people say the one that really irked me yesterday was someone had made a comment on somebody's post on Facebook that if Obama was still president, he'd have put on a hazmat suit 
and went and saw uh, the doctors and stuff. Uh, no, he wouldn't have. Because they wouldn't let him. Doesn't matter if he's president. There's a pandemic going on, people. You don't want your president getting sick and dying. So, no, Obama would not have been there. Not that he would have cared anyway. Uh, can you tell I wasn't an Obama fan? <laughs> I've just seen so many stupid, stupid comments. And... You know, I love my son. I really do. But he is just like everyone else. If you don't like Trump, I'm not saying Trump does not have his faults. I'm not saying that. Okay. I'm not saying Trump and I would be bosom buddies if he wasn't you know, president. That's not what I'm saying. I don't know if every allegation about his womanizing is true or not. Guess what? I don't care. He didn't do... He's no worse than the Kennedys or... Bill Clinton? I mean, crap. The Kennedy brothers were both sleeping with Marilyn Monroe. And yes, I know that's before my time. I'm not that old. But I've done research. How did I cut that and it don't fit? Oh, I think I did the angle wrong. No, I didn't. I didn't clip this in yet. Oh, well, I'm not going to find that again. That went to the abyss. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me see. I can't cut and talk at the same time. I'm losing. I'm losing my pieces. <laughs> Okay, that Pelosi chick has got to go. She really has to go. Did you see where she wants to take? And Okay, yes, she wants to give us another stimu stimulus check. But she wants to take it from Social Security. I'm sorry. Oh, my ear itches. I'm sorry. I know a lot of people on Social Security. My dad is one of them. I would rather not get another stimulus check than to take money from people who really need it, who are on Social Security. It's bad enough that by the time I'm old enough for Social Security, it ain't going to be there. You know? And... When I saw that that's what she was wanting to do. Okay. Shoot. My hands are getting. Oh, crap. My hands are getting weak. When I saw that's what she wanted to do, I just started to cry. And my husband's like, why are you, up, why are you so upset? I'm like. I don't want the money if they're going to take it from Social Security. I said the dipstick already used Social Security to try to impeach the president, which didn't work, you know. I don't want her or, well, or anybody taking money from somebody 
just to try and help, you know. Uh, and then the jackasses just gave themselves a raise and cut Social Security. I'm like, yeah, because they need another raise. Okay. Oh, that's so pretty. Okay, that looks so much better than the cardboard. I'll show you guys in just a minute. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I just poked them out. That didn't. That was that was weird. Shouldn't have done that. Yes, I normally don't talk politics and religion, but this this is just mind blowing to me. And you don't have to like my political views or anything. And you can call me a dipstick. I don't care. That's only good fun. Okay. Hold on a second. I want to see if maybe... Oh, wait. I'm going to take this tape off. I forgot to take the tape off. I'm sure there's somebody out there going, you know, there's an easier way you could have done the bottom of that. I'm sure there is. But guess what? <laughs> My brain <laughs> said, let's do this. This is what we're doing. Okay. So just get off my finger. Oh, I'm sure. It's just so scary. The times we're living in right now. Oh, hey, that worked better. Hey, hey, yeah. <laughs> it broke in half and fit right in that little hole. All right. right. All right, let me move this stuff out of the way. Clean up this glue, because if I don't, I will wind up sticking my arm and everything else in it. Oh, my husband came home. And he, of course, he always comes home. Uh, <laughs> he came home after work yesterday, and he was like. I heard something that really bothered me on the news on the way home. And I'm like, really? Nothing usually seems to feed, you know, phase phase my husband. But um he's like, Yeah. He said, I heard that divorce rates are up since this whole pandemic, you know, started. And I was like, well, of course it is. And he looked at me and he goes, why do you not sound surprised? And I'm like, well, let's see. You've got people who jump into marriage without really getting to know somebody, you know? And so then... You're now quarantined together and you don't know this person at all 
because you just jumped into getting married. You got married not because you were in love, but because you were in lust. And now you're finding out you can't stand this person. So, yeah, of course, there's going to be a lot of divorce. I said it happens with every pandemic. Alrighty. We got a boat finished. And it only took me over two hours. I think. Yep. Over two hours. I can't believe you guys watched me do all this nonsense for two hours. But okay, here's our boat. And that's our baby boat. Oh, I was just thinking. Okay. Yes, it's a boat. Let's see. They're using computer models to get the numbers, which is not good at all. Yeah. Well, my husband's boss's wife works for, um, uh, Homeland Security and, you know, she's not supposed to tell stuff, but the numbers are not correct. Um, yes, it is bad. And I, I agree 100% that it is bad. There's too many people, you know, sick and stuff. But the numbers are not 100% accurate. And that, that to me is a scary thought. To know that doctors are willing to lie about the numbers. Aww. It's that's what scares me, you know, is that these doctors, and I wish I could, that's what's scary. That's what, that's what made me have my first meltdown is when we found out that they're lying about the numbers. Um, I'm not going to say which state that she told it or told, told, but one of the states has been claiming that every person who died in their hospitals was from the corona virus and it wasn't true and the reason why they did it was because when someone passes away in the hospital the hospital gets so much money well during this outbreak the government's like, if anyone dies of this virus, then you get X amount more than if they just died from whatever. Well, these hospitals started lying about the death toll. 
which is not cool. And when my husband came home and told me that, I was just like, so does that mean that people, I mean, she did tell us that, yes, people are really dying from it. So, I mean, I believe that part. But to me, it's just, I find it very dis disrespectful to the people and their families who have died of this, you know? To lie about the numbers just so you can get money. That's just, to me, after this is all over and said and done with, I think the ones that did it should lose their jobs. Yes, my kitty is in heat and she's driving me up the wall. Oh, oops, I glued that to it. <laughs> so I'm not sure if I'm going to paint this. Or if I'm going to torch it. I almost like it. The way she did hers is she did white and blue and white. And the inside was completely white. Oh, I know what I was doing. Uh, I have a feeling. I don't know if it'll work. I want to try something. But I just hope everybody in our crafty community is safe and they don't get affected by this nasty little bug going around and their families are safe. I know there's a lot of them who work in the medical field and stuff. <gasps> oh, my jingles. Okay, it won't work up there because that one's a little wonky. Unless I can figure out how to drill it out without going through. But I was thinking, uh, the grooves here, I just cut that popsicle stick to fit in there. If you filled them up with groove, you know, the grooves with popsicle sticks. This one probably won't work because, I don't know, can you guys see that? That one there, it's not a straight line like these two are. And then the one up here is not straight either. They're a little jagged. But if you filled them up, it could be a cabinet or a bookshelf. For a dollhouse.
I may see if I can get my husband to take my Dremel and go through here and clean up this and then I'll be able to do channels because I think this would make a killer bookshelf for my dolls but it doesn't have to be for dolls either not really and it'd make a killer ah you could put little oh now how did I do that put little miniatures in there I have a feeling I'm going to be making another boat so that I can have a boat and then uh, and I wonder wonder if I should have torched it beforehand. I will. Okay, so yeah, that's my mini boat compared to this one, and this one was made with the little mini clothespins and cardboard. If I'd have had the coffee stir sticks, you know, the really skinny ones, I probably would peel that off and do the bottom and the stir sticks, but I don't have any stir sticks, and I'm not going to sit here and cut up these I've done that before to paint this is a table I made with the mini uh, clothespins and I just put that little bitty round under there and then there's my chair or bench or whatever what have you Let's see, put all that in there that there, that there. Hey, okay, look, my boat holds my miniatures. And then this is my swing. Oops. Like my stuff is in the way. Right, hold on. What can I do? turn it back towards me. There is my swing. This is my swing. These I colored with um the um What did I color them with? Oh, here they are. I colored them with um, touch up markers that you can get from Dollar Tree. So that's what I did there. And then this is my wishing well that I did yesterday. The swing is in mahogany. This is in cherry. And it cranks. And I think that I have enough big ones. I think I'm going to use the book, the, the, the boat as a bookshelf. In my dollhouse, not dollhouse. Uh, I may do a uh, like a room. Uh, what are they called? I call dioramas. I think. I think that's what I'm gonna do with that. Is if if I could, if my husband will clean out these channels for me so that I can get more more of these just to slide in 
then that may that may be what I do. And then I'll make miniature books and pictures and stuff like that to go on it. And do a whole, maybe like nautical theme room. I think they're called dioramas. I'm not sure. But I think I have enough big um, clothespins left that I'm going to make a bigger one of these to go with my swing. And I used mahogany on that one. So I'll need mahogany. Oh crap, what was that? <laughs> Did I miss a man's hand? No, no, that was just her. Okay. I think no. Those are mahogany. I don't know if I'll have a lot of time to do this one. Oh, my stencils. Right, 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 right. Okay, these are the stencils that I made. It'll show up. Let's see. This is one of them. Made her. I made that one. That one would be more of a mask, I guess. I made people stencils and I kept all the people so that they could be the mass. I think that's I think that's what it's called, right? When you use the inside of the stencil. And then I made two different size pipe stencils. More people's. Uh, I made a gear stencil. More people. More people's. More people's. And then I made a paint splatter one. 
And then I made that head. And then I made this one. And then I think this was supposed to be a card front, but I decided to turn it into a stencil. And then I believe this one is a card front as well. And I turned it into a stencil. And then this one was on Cricut. So I made that one as well. And then I've got a little pouch in here that has all the people that I cut out. So that I'll have them for masks and stuff. I think that was all that was in there. Yeah, I got these people and then and then I cut out some gears and stuff. I made a gear border and that was about it. Oh, and then I made I took some keys, different shaped keys, and I put them together and I had the cricket cut it out. So I'll have like a key one. I did two of those, but I don't see the other one in here. I've just been trying to play around with my cricket to see what what all shapes and stuff I can get and I know some of you came in late, but don't throw these, if, if you do anything with clothespins, don't throw these away. Um, you can make things with them. I made, I made this. And this is not my idea. I saw this on Pinterest, but I did do my own twist. They said glue it. I don't know how you would glue it. Don't I, I have no clue. So I took wire and I threaded it through here in an X position and then I threaded my flower onto it and then I did the curly cues. But um I was watching a lady Pam from the paper outpost and she uses them like this in journals okay you can put them on the page any way you want right okay and you're thinking well that's just ugly okay well yeah that part's ugly but you string stuff through it you make it a dangle is that not cool? Now I have like 50 million dangles. <laughs> In two different sizes. I even kept these teeny tiny ones. I, do, I honestly don't know if these will go on a page or not. But I thought, okay, I, I can't throw them away. So, yeah. Um, if you guys watch her. Go check out her tutorial on how she did the dangles with these. It was basically all she did was run fibers and stuff through here. Like you would a, a jump ring. There's no jump ring. Whatever you all make your little dangles out of. 
I don't know what you make dangles out of. I've never made a dangle. But the, the cross and the star are made the same way. You take 10 of these. We'll make a star real quick. And I saw this on Pinterest, so this is not my idea. One, two. Well, that didn't work. You just put these together. That's three. Four. Five. Six. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Wait, is it nine? Is it nine or ten? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can't count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, it's ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eight, and then you have to attack. I mean, you can do anything with these. Is that not... Oh, and I saw people making, like, jewelry out of them. Is that, like, so retro? I mean, I think it looks cool just like that, too. I mean, can you imagine that running down a page? I mean, it's so... I don't know. Industrial. Steampunky. But, and I did see people making jewelry out of them, too. Supposedly, you can turn this into a star. Now, don't. I don't know. Okay. There's a point. Wait. There's a point. How do you get a star? Oh, my jingle. I made a star. Okay. All right. Now, how do you keep it in a star shape? I don't know. This is all they ever show on Pinterest. They don't show how you keep it this way. I don't know if there's a trick to it. Because as soon as you move it... I don't know if they maybe use super blue. My star just went wonky. Holy moly. Okay, so there's the star. That's the best I can do. The cross, all you do is you take and you do that for the cross. I saw those on Pinterest. The cross made more sense. Now stringing it did not make any sense to me, but that took me an hour to figure that out. Because there was no tutorial, there was just a picture. But yeah, I liked it. And then like I said, I just took the wire, ran it through after I put my ribbon ribbon in there. But I was thinking because I've made stuff before with uh Clothes pins, 
and I had kept all these little pieces and I'm like, I don't know what to do with them, but they kind of look like the inside of a light bulb also, so you could use them for that. But yeah, when I saw Pam use it as a uh, clip on a journal, I was just like, that's ingenious. Absolutely ingenious. So I wanted to share that. So yeah, don't throw these away. They can be used. I may do a video of where I make some uh, dangles with them. I think oh, I got those. So I was going to do on Mojave. I wanted to match the swing. Actually, I'm going to do it with mahogany. We're going to torch them. Torch them. Torch them. What did I do with my torch? See, as this, this thing has battery. I got to take the batteries out so that I just have room for my little clothespin thingies. Right back in for now. My torch. My torch. Hello. My torch left me. Oh, there it is. Alrighty. Oh, wait. You tell I haven't used it in a while. to lift it up off the table off my glass mat there we go I get the box on fire it'll be fine don't do what I'm doing do it the same way It also smells like burnt popcorn. I want a bigger torch. I think it's almost lunchtime for me because my brain's getting foggy. And my stomach growled. Surprised my camera didn't pick that up. Turn out like my 
my cross. I don't think I want to do that no more. I think I am just going to do my hobby. I'm not turning out the color I want them. That's what it smells like. It's not, it honestly smells like burnt popcorn. I'm like you. I like it a little burnt, but for some reason, these just did not. These didn't turn the, the same color as my cross I did. So we're just now going to do the mahogany over it. I know that my torch is strong enough. I just don't understand why it wasn't giving me. I mean, different clothespins react react differently too. I'm surprised my son didn't come down here and say, "What's burning?" I'm telling you, these things are awesome. You get three for a dollar at Dollar Tree. My Dollar Tree anyway has them. You get mahogany, cherry, and black in one. And then in another three pack, you get oak, maple, and something else. You get three light colors in one pack and the three darks in another pack. And they're good for any wood, really. And uh, though one night I was doing the swing, I was trying to stay up because my son gets off at midnight. And needless to say, at 11 o'clock at night, Dollar Tree is not open. So I, <laughs> my mahogany had ran out. So if you put just a little bit of alcohol in it, you can um, get a little bit more life out of them. But once the alcohol... Once you've had alcohol to them and they've ran their course, they're, just, they're no good. And riddle me this. How are they all open? They're not essentials. Was your store curbside or could you actually go inside? I know the ones here in Tennessee are just curbside. I just want to be able to go back into one and see crafty stuff and be able to touch it.
Well, I'll be. See, the ones here in Tennessee, you can't go inside them at all. You can order it and do curbside pickup. I'd wear a mask if they let me go in. My, <laughs> my husband and I got into an argument over essentials and what could be open and what couldn't be open. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Uh, shoe stores, they ain't essential. Clothes stores, they ain't essentials. You can get all that at Walmart. <laughs> I used to work for a shoe store. If you all work for a shoe store and you all work for a clothes store, I'm sorry, you're having to work this crap. No, they were open. Here in Tennessee, shoe stores and clothing stores were all open. They closed down. Uh, what was it? They closed down for a week. Really? A week. I told my husband if I still worked at the one store that fired me, that as soon as this epidemic started and they were like, people need to quarantine, I'd have been like, are we closing? And if they'd have been like, no, I'd have been like, well, guess what? I ain't working here. I know how nasty the public is. They don't care come in sick coughing all over the money and hand it to you oh crafts yeah craft supplies are essential it keeps us sane and it keeps us from killing people <laughs> That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Oh, I know. That's what me and my, my husband were talking about. Oh, and I love that post on Facebook that says, I finally figured out why. There's a toilet paper shortage. I, I sneezed or I coughed and 20 people crapped themselves. Yeah, our Tuesday morning, I don't think is open yet. Here. Um, our Joann's and Michael's didn't close. They stayed open. But they were, they're curbs, like I said, curbside only, um, which to me is pointless because I want to be able to look for deals. And when I get there, I always change my mind on what I want anyway. So, yeah. And I went to, like I said, last weekend, my husband drove me to Walmart. First time I've been to Walmart during, since this whole thing has happened. And there was plenty of food. But there wasn't a stitch of 
fabric other than wool. I believe that was it. Wool. And batting. That's it. Nothing else. Uh, oh, there was two sewing machines. Because I need a sewing machine. Because uh, my sewing machine is a piece of crap. And I cannot use it. Because I cannot figure it out. Anywho. Uh, they had two sewing machines. But I was not going to pay the price for them. One was a sewing machine and in border. I don't understand. That sounded too complicated for me. And I can't remember what the other one was. I don't want a side bobber. Side, side bobber. A side loading bobbin. Because that's what I have. And I cannot get the stupid thing to work. I want a top loader. I know how to work those. So, what's wrong with my sewing machine is, anytime I go to use it, I can sew for about 10 minutes. And then, it just snaps the, snaps the thread. And I have to take it completely apart because the thread in the bobbin has somehow got wrapped up in all the innards and the bobbin housing. I've tried changing the tension. I've cleaned the machine. And even my husband, we watched videos on how to fix this. And he got it fixed. He sewed on it. And then uh, I was like, all right, this is awesome. And I sat and I cut fabric up one day because I wanted to make snippet rolls because I had watched Miss Elizabeth do it and it looked like it was so much fun. And I got my sewing machine out, set it on my table, sewed one line of fabric on one of the snippet rolls, and it started snapping the thread. And it's not old thread. We went and bought brand new thread, and he re redid the bobbin, and all in new thread. And it's back to just snapping and getting all tangled up in that little compartment. And so I told him I was going to take a gun and I was going to shoot it. Yeah, I checked my tension and... It's not, I, I don't know what's wrong with it. I just, I do not have any luck with that side. This sewing machine, I've had it for five years. And I had no issues out of it whatsoever until my uh, my mom got sick, as a lot of you know, and she uh, had died with, she died with cancer. Well, my aunt had came up to stay with my mom and dad, and they were sewing together. And my mom asked me if my aunt could use my sewing machine while she was here. And I was like, yeah, sure. Um... I said, I'll just finish my quilt when you guys, you know, are done using it. It's not that big of a deal. I got it back. And it's been acting like that ever since I got it back. Cannot get it to, I don't know what she has done to my sewing machine.
So I thought it was just, you know, me and my husband being goofy and, you know, not able to figure out how to work a sewing machine. And yeah, we YouTube the issue and we followed a whole bunch of videos and it'll work for about five to ten minutes and it just does it all over again. I showed I was showing Ray my sewing machine and she said that uh, someone she knows had gotten the same machine and that they had issues out of it too and that they couldn't figure out how to fix it. And I'm like, okay, all right. I'm going back to a top loading bob and at least those you know how to fix. Yeah, isn't YouTube great? You can find anything on YouTube nowadays. Some stuff you may not want to find, but you know. <laughs> I think I went pudding. Let me check. Let me check. She going pudding. Oh, what pudding? What says that pudding? Go ahead. I forgot to take my allergy medicine. Oh well. I take it now, it'll knock me out. I know I said I was going to stop and eat. I still haven't stopped and ate, have I? Nope. I haven't. received a package in the mail yesterday and this was in it and I want to use this box for something good lord that's strong grippy tape The only bad thing about these markers is they're not completely flat on the bottom, so don't try setting them on their fishies. It will not worky. See, so these are the ones I did with the alcohol the other <laughs> the other night when my marker was running low. So I was looking at Walmart because someone told me, look at Walmart for clothespins. They're cheaper. Okay, they're right. They are cheaper. You get 50 clothespins for 97 cents. Of course, my Walmart is also out of clothespins along with my flipping Dollar Tree. Because I think everybody and their brother is doing... Um, clothespin art. At least that's my theory. But I was looking at Walmart and I'm like, 
You have got to be kidding me. You can get clothespins. The same clothespins. In the craft section. And they are almost $3 for $24. I may want clothespins, but I'm not paying almost three dollars for twenty-four. Not happening. Uh, the ones they sell at my Dollar Tree come in a thirty thirty-six pack, I believe is what it is. And like I said, uh, Walmart has fifty for ninety-seven cents. So. If they ever get them back in. Which I'm sure they will. I'm going to stock up. Those are special clothespins. Yeah. They're, they're special alright. They're especially. Expensive. I was just like. Ray and I. We talk a lot. Uh, happy Ray. And uh, I, <laughs> I was telling her, I said, I don't understand why crafters go out and they spend $5 on a four pack of decorative clothespins when you can go. I didn't know about how much they were at Walmart until just now. Until, yeah, yesterday. I said, you can go to Dollar Tree and get 30, 36 for a buck. Okay. You can paint them yourself. Any color you want. You can use your markers on them. This marker just ran out, so this one's dead. <laughs> you can paint them any color you want. You can decorate them any way you want. You can use your own papers. And she's like, it's for the convenience of not having to do it. And I guess I get that. But I guess from where I haven't where I don't work and I don't have my own money and I have to ask my husband you know hey I have a couple of dollars for this or a couple of dollars for that that it's really made me stop and think I know I've always been I've always been this way even be even before I started working and stuff if I can make it cheaper than what I can buy it for that's what I'm going to do it that's what I'm going to do I used to hang clothes in the yard and then we got a dog and he's gone now. He passed away, but he used to take the clothes off the line. I found it amusing. My husband didn't think it was funny. I thought it was hilarious to see this short midget dog hanging from the clothesline from my husband's jeans. It would be hilarious. Anyway, he didn't think it was so he bought me a dryer. But it just amazes me how as crafters, some people are just like, oh, it's easier to buy it than to make it. Also, you miss out on this cool stuff. Like here I am. I know this is going to waste a lot of ink, but I don't care. Look at how it just, it runs through the veins. You miss out on stuff like that when you don't do the stuff yourself. Maybe I'm weird. I don't know. Oh, 
Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. It's just, I don't know. I guess where I'm so frugal. Oh, that's a notification. I don't even care what kind of notification I got. Um, I don't know. It just bugs me. Like, I'm just now getting into journaling and stuff, and <laughs> Ray was telling me about the different paper companies and stuff, because I, I asked Ray everything. And I'm like, she goes, uh, there was some, some lady selling graphic 45 the other day. I don't remember who it was, but I was having fun just looking at the pretty papers and stuff. And Ray was telling me how much paper pads were from graphic 45. And I'm like, there's no way there's paper is that much. I mean, it's paper for God's sakes. And so she sent me a link and I'm just like, it's paper. <laughs> People pay that price for paper. And I, it just, <laughs> I was amazed. I was so amazed. It's gorgeous paper. Like for Christmas, uh, I was gifted some money. And I got to buy my very first paper pads. And uh, I got the, was it Michael's? I believe it was Michael's where they were... Uh, half off or something so they were like two something I don't know it was during their Christmas sale and I was tickled pink because I've never had paper pads and uh, I was looking for one for Ray because Ray was looking for a certain one and I bought Ray hers and because uh, she could they were completely sold out of her store and my store had all of them. It was the pink Santa Claus, if y'all remember which one that one was. Uh, they were sold out of her store. My store, I think, was just hoarding them. But, yeah. And everybody always laughs. They're like, how can you not know how much this stuff is? I'm coming from the miniature world. Uh, some of the graphic 45 papers that she was showing me was like $45 and up for paper. And I'm just like, um, no, no, thank you. I don't care how pretty it is. <laughs> how pretty it is. No, I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> My husband, the other day, I was showing him some of the papers she was showing me. And he's like, you know, I liked it better when you were doing dollhouses. The only expense I had was the dollhouse. Because everything else I made from scratch. Because I recycle. <laughs> I know. I've got, uh, that's what I did. I have started scanning my paper pads <laughs> that I have. Yes, ma'am, I understand that. I understand. But you know what sucks is you can only print out in a eight, what is it, eight and a half by 11. They don't make printers for houses I guess that print bigger than that I don't know I may be wrong 
they may they may do and I just don't know about it <laughs> yeah no I I was impressed with Michael's and you know as you all know I, I don't really go to craft stores all that much uh, I get my stuff from Walmart and I get my stuff from uh, Dollar Tree that you know my husband does not mind um, now I'm not saying that I'm not spoiled if there is a good enough sale at Michael's or something like that and he has the money you know extra money he will get me you know some stuff I just I hate asking oh my god I hate asking I don't like asking for stuff I would rather try to figure out how to do it make it myself than to ask for anything but that's just how I am you know he works for the money he should do fun stuff for himself I, I, that may sound weird I don't know I, I know I'm weird <laughs> but um Plus, I like making this stuff. I'm trying to figure out how to make digitals. That is something I really want to learn how to do. And then I can just print out my own cool stuff. Well, yeah, it takes ink to print out the paper, but if you look at it this way, <clears throat> you're buying a 12 by 12 sheet of paper. Most of your paper pads are double, not all of them, but some of them are like double sided, right? And if, say, both sides have a cool print on it, you have to pick one side or the other. But if you scan it, then you can print off as many as you want. And who really makes a 12 by 12 book anyway? I've never, I mean, I'm sure there's crafters out there that do do the 12 by 12s. Books, I don't, I don't know. But for the most part, Everything's under 12 by 12. And you can print out 11 and a half by, or it's 8 and a half by 11 on printers. I don't know if they're bigger than that or not. But I know it's 8 and a half by 11 for sure. That's plenty big enough without a whole lot of waste. And yes, I know there are some things that you do need 12 by 12 sheets for. Like, Miss Elizabeth made this cool book out of them. Awesome stuff. You know. But, when all said and done, it's folded up like this. <laughs> no. Yep, happy life, happy wife. And yeah, I saw that at Walmart uh, where the paper pads, like, right now they've got a killer sale at my Walmart on paper pads. I forgot to count. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, they had a bunch that was on clearance. And I really wanted to ask my husband if I could get some because they were like, they're two fifty each. Hello, <laughs> and you know, they were nature, and there was something else. They were real pretty, but a bunch of people started coming in the aisle, and that started to freak me out. And <laughs> then my husband told me I was going the wrong way down the aisle. That freaked me out because I did not know I was supposed to look at the floor to see which way you went up and down aisles. You know, really? I didn't know there was a wrong way and a right way to go, but apparently I was going the wrong way. <laughs> I told him I'm blonde. I can get away with it. That was my theory anyway. I have no idea. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. You know, these 12 by 12s, when you cut them down, you lose half of it anyway. I mean, yeah, people say, well, you can use that for embellishments and stuff. Uh, well, first you have to remember where you put it. So with the scanning part, say like you get a page, and I've done this before, you find a page in one of the scrapbook paper pads, and you're like, oh, I don't like that part of it. Well, guess what? When you scan it, you don't have to put that ugly part in there. You can scan just the part you like. Yeah, and I love that you can do it on cardstock or paper. Yep, yep. <coughs> <coughs> That's like, um, I wanted some Tim Holtz people. <coughs> I didn't have any. And, uh, Miss Elizabeth actually at in her Facebook group it has this little area where you can uh, ask for stuff that you would like to have and all I put on there was uh, I think it was little girls that I can either color or cut out or something and so she sent me, I did a happy mail on it. <clears throat> and in it were some of the Tim Holtz little people. And so I scanned them and put them in my computer. And then I printed them off on cardstock. And then I found some on Pinterest. I think it was Pinterest. Crap, I don't know. And I printed them off and I cut them out. Because I didn't have any people. And Ray's like, well, cut them out of magazines. I don't get magazines. I haven't figured out how to sign up for free magazine subscriptions. Like everybody else has to get free magazines. Everything I find is pay for. And yeah, I don't pay. So I don't have no magazines to cut up. I don't get the newspaper. So that's how I got my, my little peoples. 
yeah, they may be the same people, but I'm okay with that. You print them out and you can use your sprays on them. Uh, you can use markers on them, especially since I did it with, um, you know, they're in black and white. Oh, <coughs> speaking of that, I want to make some fairies. So, this is what they had at my Dollar Tree. They had these butterfly bunches. And I thought, oh, fairy wings. Wow, they're showing up blue. They're purple. They are people. Yeah. So I thought these would. Uh, sorry, I was red red chat and I lost what I was doing here. <laughs> so I thought these would make cute wings on my paper people that uh, Miss Elizabeth sent me. So. <clears throat> I don't know how many of these I need. I should have probably figured that out before it took them apart. Ow! Crap! Oh, you work at a library. I can't wait till I don't even go to the library. I need to. Our library was supposed to have a giant book sale. And then this, you know, my corona hit. That just did away with the library and their sale. I'm sure they're going to reschedule it. They just haven't announced when yet. Maybe it was blue glitter. <clears throat> but they had that coat. They have the purple, a baby blue, and a cream. And I got two of all of them, except for apparently the blue. I only grabbed one. Yeah, I was so <clears throat> I'll have to take some hours and you in my oh god, it's starting to get bad. My head's starting to pound. And I can hear myself getting stoofy. Oh look, the glitter somehow stuck to my finger jigger. Okay, I don't know how many I need for this. I'm just like, <laughs> away. This is 
Wait, I showed you guys the purple. That's that's the blue one. And then that's the cream or off yellow. I don't know. It has like pink glitter on it. But you get quite a few on there. Let's see how many you get. You get the one I pulled off. One. <laughs> one, two. Three. Four. don't know how many. I don't know if these actually go to this or not. But I got nine on this one. Not thought about all the glitter, but that's all right. So it looks like you get about nine, maybe ten. Yeah, that's what I was thinking a cute little fairy garden or something like that. Do I want to do the table like that again, or do I want to just it's bad. I have to look at my own table to see how I did it. <clears throat> I think that's why they did it that way. It's because you can't really... Okay, I'm going to do it that way. Yep, you can wire them. I was thinking that too. I was thinking uh, I had saw <clears throat> a long time ago uh, a lady make um, what she called berries out of pipe cleaners if I do it this way if that might help That'll take too many. <clears throat> if I do it this way, I don't think I'll have enough.
Oh, I messed that one all together, didn't I? <clears throat> Gonna be too big. Oh, that would be cool to use resin on them. That's the next thing I want to get to is resin. And play with that. <clears throat> That's one of those, I don't know what I want to do. I think it's because it's time for food. Mm. 
Alrighty. I think I'm gonna jump off here. Yeah, well, as the butterflies, they'd make beautiful uh, earrings just like that, too. I think. I was thinking journals. I was thinking mixed media. I was thinking diorama. <laughs> I like multi-purpose uh, stuff. I also saw where people were taking these and doing half rounds. They would glue them like this. And they'd glue two of them. But they would glue them side by side. And they were making napkin holders out of them. For like their tables and stuff. That was pretty cute. But I don't need anything like that. And then they were just making round circles and using them for trivets and stuff. That was pretty cool. Don't need any of those either. But, all right. I'm going to jump off here. And I'm going to get me some lunch. And once I figure out how I'm going to do this table, I will probably show the finished product. Monday or something like that. Sometime next week. I don't know. I'm not going to make any promises. <coughs> if I can get more clothespins, then I'll probably do some more clothespin art. If not, it may be popsicle art next week. <coughs> or journals. I don't know. It depends on what kind of mood I'm in. A mini napkin holder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think you guys want to watch me do a mukbang, so I'm definitely not going to eat on 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 the live channel or live live stream live channel. <laughs> Especially since I don't even know what's up there to eat for lunch. So anyway, thank you guys for hanging out with me and all my craziness and madness and. I'm going to try and do better and do more streams. I've missed it. I just, I haven't felt inspired since all this stuff has been going on. And I mean, I've been crafting, doing little things here and there. Like I said, making ephemera, making, making uh, <coughs> stencils and stuff. And I made these little pocket journals, thingies. I still have to add the embellishments to... Oh, wait. Where's the pocket? There it is. I still have to add the um, journaling cards and the tuck spots to some of them. But there's that one. Let me show you one that's done. Oh, my tape came undone. That's great. I'll have to glue that. Nope, this one's not done either. Okay, I have one here that's done, I promise. There we go. Okay. Looks like that. And then I got a journaling spot with a card. There's a journaling card inside. A journaling card, and then this one has a tuck and journaling. Oh, I'm like so three done <laughs> and three to finish. No, four to finish. I've got four of those to finish. And then I have a journal up there to finish that I started. I just haven't haven't been in the mood to I'm 
Learn to craft. Until I saw the the wood stuff and I was like, yes! <laughs> I can do that. I've got clothespins. I can buy more. I didn't know the apocalypse was going to take all my clothespins. <laughs> But anyway, thank you guys for watching, and yeah, I promise to be on a little bit more. So, hopefully next week, I can come up with something, even if it's just finishing up those little journals. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to say, bye from Tennessee. Bye, everybody.